Hey guys, and welcome back to the last episode of Season 7 of our White Tigers Rising series. And as you will notice, we, we slid back behind Northampton on goal difference, but the White Tigers of Truro City are going to League 1 football. Um, so that's it. We have been automatically promoted. <clears throat> uh, a massive, massive three-way... Uh, sort of point tie at the end of the season between Northampton, ourselves, and Plymouth. Um, we happen to finish in the middle on goal difference, so I think we have some measure of our defense to thank here, given the fact that the offense was really, you know, struggling a bit. And we are through to League One. So this is a huge, huge, huge for us. Um, we are reaching heights we never have reached before as, as, as this club. And we're going to go and experience, you know, some things that we haven't ever before. Uh, and we are two promotions away from going all the way to the top. So, uh, super excited, to say the least. Super excited about this. Uh, we'll just do it quickly at the end. So, Freddie Tracy put in 25 for us. Victor augmented him with a nice 12. Um, ben Holmes, 18 assists to finish out. Uh, the year and 12 man of the matches. Uh, our best average rated guy, Ben Holmes, finished that one off with a 7.4. So overall, a really, a really good, uh, a really great campaign, I guess. Uh, a decent end of the season, but a great campaign. So stay tuned, guys, and I'll see you in the highlights. <laughs> Okay, guys, so we are here at the Northampton game. This was the pivotal game of the month. Uh, this was really the game to decide second and third. Um, and unfortunately, we drew. I, I <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. Uh, unfortunately, we drew. So nothing really useful happened. And unfortunately, I think with the draw, we let Plymouth into the conversation. Um, so... I, I think we ended up a little lucky at the end of the season because of all that, but um, nonetheless, we we escaped with a point, which was better than a loss, because a loss, you know, given the rest of the month that we had had, um, would have put us in the playoff spots, and, well, that's no good. Um, so, I, 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 it's hard to put a stamp on this one. I felt like we were in control. I felt like we were the better team. We just didn't do anything with it. Um so Northampton opened it up in the 64th minute. Um, opened it up in the 64th minute. Just a nice effort, passed it around, got him into some space and, and put it in. So I was a little nervous. We ended up um, pushing forward uh, pretty heavily. Uh, and in the 82nd minute, Victor managed to snake the, uh, the equalizer back. Kinsella out wide. You know, we find the the pressing fullbacks um, have been a much, much more successful addition to uh, the tactic this season. So getting them into a more attacking role um, has really, really helped. I think it's also helped our, our wingers be a little more productive uh, on that. So that's the end of that one, guys. 1-1 one, one draw against Northampton really didn't help but didn't hurt. So that's it for this highlight. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, guys, so we're back here for the Braintree game, and there's really nothing to say on this one other than I'm pissed. Um, this is a team that it was in the relegation spots, got relegated at the end of the season, um, and we lost. Uh, we shot a lot. We put a lot on target. We were good, but we lost. Um, really really pissed that we managed to lose this one um because this was this was the diff this was second place um i really felt that with braintree and lincoln in there were two in two games we absolutely should have won and had to win burton was the game that was going to be the wild card and by dropping this we basically set ourselves up for 
for, for a dicey last day, uh, unfortunately. So, George Lapsley, though, has been coming on pretty nice here at the end of the season. I think he's one um, that I'm happy that we have and, and is going to help. I don't know if he's going to start in my... Ooh, just so nice. Um, I don't know if he's going to start in the League One midfield, but he's certainly going to be a key aspect of... Um, you know, squad rotation and uh, and off the bench play because he does offer um, more offense to the situation. Uh, when he comes on, he's not quite as defensive. So we'll have to see how that shapes up. But they get one back a few minutes later here. Um, you know, I'm bothered by this, right? We're back, we're solid, and Hope just finds space. So center backs are something we're going to be looking for because I'm not necessarily convinced that we're going to be bringing the crowd we have um, up to start with it. And then Jarrell Sellers, he finishes the deal off here. Um, just We're all set up, we're right there, and we just can't, we just can't do anything. Um, so a, a really awful 2-1 loss, and, and that was sort of, I think, the, the, you know, that made the last part of the month a lot more tense than it needed to be. So that's it for this highlight, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, guys, so this was the home game against Lincoln, and this was this was the way the Braintree game was supposed to go. Um, we were good on the night. We were effective. Um, we did what we needed to do. We got the job done. We buried them. Um, 3-1. I will tell you that I got really nervous and was getting really uh, annoyed when they opened the scoring up here in the 33rd minute. Uh, so I thought this was going the way of Braintree and I was pissed because there was no way I wanted to go and have to play just center back falls asleep there. Um, but there was no way I wanted to go and play uh, playoffs, especially in this kind of shaky form we've been here at the end of the season. But in the 45th minute, just in front of halftime, our savior, big Freddie Tracy, just strong, massive individual effort, which he's so capable of, um, turns on the style there and squares us up 1-1. Keshi Anderson, who's uh, moving on at the end of the season, manages to draw us up. You know, Freddie gets in there, Wheeler can't handle it, and Keshi's right there to finish the job. Um, unfortunately. I'm a little disappointed, and I feel like he probably didn't get the shake that I, that he should have gotten. Um, unfortunately, his long-term injury this season forced us to go out and get another striker that um, just performed better uh, in it. So I feel kind of bad. Lapsley there with some decent defense. And I don't know. It just looks like crap goalkeeping more than anything else. I mean, I feel bad the guy had no goal attached to him, but it was just really shitty goalkeeping. Um, but I do feel bad for Keshi. He he really never got an opportunity to play um, to play much because Victor came. You know, we had to go in and bring somebody in, especially for our four four two system. Um, he was out for you know three or four months with injury, and by the time he was really ready to be back, Victor was was really bedded in and supporting Freddie. You know, pretty well. So, uh, unfortunately, we just really weren't able to, uh, to to really utilize him much over the season. So, um, he's moving on at the end. I'm a little sad to go. I feel like we kind of did him a little wrong uh, overall. But, you know, what you got to do. So, that's it for the Lincoln Highlight. And I'll see you guys in... Okay, guys. So, this was the Burton Albion game. Um, a draw, a decent result. We've never really managed some, any particularly great results against these guys. Um, tightly contested, really pretty even across the board. Um, I, I think, I, I think it was a fair result. So let's go jump into the highlights and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how things played out. Um, first half was pretty quiet, pretty dull, um, Again, this was really, uh, this was a giant midfield battle. Um, I was interesting to see Richard Eckersley. So for me, um, he's a former uh, New York Red Bull. Um, he was only here for, for, I know, it was only one or two seasons um, before he went back to England. But it was kind of neat to see him uh, 
still in the game, still still playing uh, at a pretty decent level uh, overall. Uh, so again, we're on the front foot. Yeah, a lot of corners for us here. Um, well, not a lot, but uh, I, it felt like a lot, I guess. Um, you know. Uh, that's something I'm not happy with Lapsley that he does is is that he's just able to be pushed off the ball by bigger, stronger guys. Um, so we're going to look to tighten that up and strengthen our midfield there. Um, but he does spread the ball well. Fullbacks still getting used. To, fullbacks and wingers are still getting used to the width with each other, so they do tend to climb around on top of each other sometimes. Um, not sure what the hell Freddie was thinking on that one, and I got to be fair, I was a little nervous at this point when he starts doing shit like that. Um, it it always lets me think we're in for a really long day uh, it's when he starts spraying the ball all over the place. Um, good strong play there as we were trying to clear it out. Unfortunately, we just couldn't hook up with the strikers uh, to, to get it out of the way. But you know, we're holding a pretty solid line there, and we're really keeping them from, from penetrating in any meaningful way. Um, Cornell with a with a huge save there on what probably should have been a goal with, a, with one more touch. Um from them, but Holmes getting his head out there, you know, we're able to start work and play again, a nice switch of the field to, to sort of stretch things back out. Um, decent overlapping run from, from fullback. So he's able to find Kinsella back again. We get Lapsley, uh, you know, we're distributing the ball. Holmes puts it on frame, just a decent save from more uh, on there. So I'm happy with how the ball's getting distributed. Um, I am starting to ponder a little bit about what we should do with the tactic next season. If the, I think we, you know, we're not really creating as much as I would have liked. I think we're sure we're defensively solid. Um, you really can't argue about that. But um, we need to find some better balance. Just unable to get through the defense there. You know, shot after shot into the face of somebody else. Um, but we're not really able to 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 turn. Um, our defensive solidity into, or you know, or we're not really able to leverage our defensive solidity. Um, we, I think we really need to, you know, decent shot from Victor there. Um, we really need to kind of open things up, um, is what needs to happen uh, on that front. So um, we're gonna we're gonna jump in and take a look at the tactic over the summer. See what we can. Um, see what we can do, see what we can, you know, if there's something we can, you know, kind of unlock and rolls in that over the summer to generate some more opportunity. Um, we're going to look at, at strikers as well. I think Freddie's still with us. Um, everybody else is, I believe done at the end of the season. Victor was only a, a short one year deal. Um, Keshi's on a transfer and so is, uh, and I think Jamie Veal's deal is up, either it's up or I think he's transferring. Um, but either way, we're, we're going to be out, uh, there and one of those semi dumb luck goals, um, unfortunately a little bothered by it, but I think one of those semi dumb luck type goals. Um, but thankfully we keep the pressure on, we step things up and Freddie's right there with his big head to do what he do best and put in 25 for the season, uh, which is not a bad return uh, overall from him. Um, I'm not super disappointed with the return we've had on him, but again, he's just so super streaky and we can't get into these situations where we're totally relying on individual efforts from him. Um, and that's part of what I want to look at the tactic is to figure out how to, how to create better situations for the strikers. I, I just feel like we're not creating, um, we're not creating ideal situations. We're like on that, right? So we're, yeah, you know, and we have to retool our set pieces, but we're pulling them way too deep. Um, but even on, even, you know, even defending in that, he, he's, he's still sitting really deep. He's coming back and he's a poacher. So he should really be focused on just pure scoring. Um, but he's not. So, so we have to take a look at how to, um, how to sort of advance that. Um, obviously we'll have to do it within the roles and that, that we can afford and find and players we can find, um, so it'll be a little bit of a mixed bag to see what we can and can't do, but um, we will go in and see if there's an opportunity to uh, to do something to to sort of change our offensive fortunes around for next season. Because I think we're we're probably starting to run out of um, 
the ability to stretch our defense and, and leverage it to kind of keep getting promoted. We're going to need to find better balance in the team. You know, I'm okay if we're not the first, you know, the best defense in the league. If we're top five, you know, defense in this, in order to sacrifice to create some offense and, and, you know, we're top five, top five, you know, I think that's obviously an ideal situation, but we can't be any more in this, you know, number one, number two level defense and, you know, 15th, 18th, you know, 10th best offense um, that just doesn't that doesn't bode well for our future success uh, at this point so at this point game should be wrapping up here momentarily um, you know decent ideas at the end uh, I think I'm pretty happy with our fullbacks and how they've sort of adjusted so I think we're going to end up keeping I think we're going to keep them we'll look to bring in some backup I think Reese is with us as a backup still, I think he's okay as the backup left back. We're going to need uh, a backup right back because I think everybody else is moving on uh, on that one. But overall, uh, a pretty decent end of the season, a, a decent result against a tough team, and we are promoted. So I'll see you guys in the wrap-up. Okay, guys, so that's it for Season 7 as we wave goodbye to League 2 and start our preparations and a, sh and a long and hearty summer uh, for League One. So, uh, remember guys, if you like the video, you like the series, please hit that like button. It lets me know that you're still, you know, you're still kind of out there and you enjoy what you're watching. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Um, also, check out Paul's Creating a Legacy series with FC United of Manchester. He's doing some really cool things in there. Uh, he's a little faster with episodes than I am. Um, because I like to use the weekends to try and do as much of the recording and prep work for it, and he's he's constantly pumping them out. So he's a little farther ahead, um, but there's some awesome, awesome things going on with FC United of Manchester, so check those guys out. I got the playlist up here, so if you're missing or if you have missed any of, of the White Tigers Rising, please go check it all out. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments. Hit me up on Twitter, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye now.